Hi, welcome back to another DTV episode. I'm your host, Devon Sopo. You're watching DTV. Do I start out? I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. <clears throat> There was a film competition and a student, Nala Stokes, has entered and she made a film called Teacher. It was about women in the STEM field and we will put a link in the description below and please show her support by voting and spreading the word. In school, we are taught about amazing scientists that did amazing things. Mandel helped us understand genetics. Newton created the laws of gravity. But there are women scientists too that are not taught in our current curriculum. Fatima of Mantine was a philosopher whose words on the true nature of love is only preserved in Plato. Now, I remember learning about Plato, but I don't remember learning about Diotima. And that's the problem. There are these amazing women in history whose stories are not being told. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. This field is dominated by men, but does it have to be? We just changed semesters, so I think I'm up to 10 girls total, which is super exciting. Um, most of the time I have one or two a semester, even a year. Slowly, society is getting better at pushing girls towards them, but we're not there yet. As it stands, 21% of male students, compared to 8% of female students, are in STEM classes right now. In my school, there are usually no more than three girls in any given engineering class. What? Inspires, what do you think inspires the girls to pick an engineering pathway like STEM? They have to find it. Um, I didn't, I went into engineering because I was annoyed by the results of a personality assessment. I said I was supposed to be an artist. Well, I am, but it's more of a creative, practical artist, not a paint and sculpture artist. Get them hands on, get them into the engineering, seeing that that is something in their wheelhouse that they can do, that they have the capacity to do it. Having a good role model is a big part of what leads girls to engineering classes. Mentors and role models push and encourage girls not only to see that STEM can be fun, but they can also lead to exciting careers. I was in uh, an engineering class like this uh, back in middle school, so I thought, why not? It might be similar. Girls should try their best to get into things like STEM. It's a very cool thing to be a part of, and you know, it's just, Science is cool anyway. I was not taught about Anne Easley, the woman behind the mathematics encoding of NASA rockets. Catherine Freeze studied dark matter and even started studying dark stars which haven't even been seen by a human eye. It empowers them. Oh my gosh, it empowers them. Um, I've read stories about uh, adult women engineers, or not engineers, just adult women who go and learn how to maybe set up a well or a small power station and they travel around and they give that to other people. And they Women in STEM are making history and changing the world. But we don't get taught about the things that they did and girls are left feeling like they don't fit in with STEM. We'd be real good at that. You should do that maybe. Maybe you probably need to hear it from like someone you really trust and care about. But that's probably all it really would take. And lots of hard work on your part as well probably. In order to start encouraging girls to pursue STEM, we need to also start including more scientists and women engineers in our school curriculum. Women only take up 37% of the STEM workforce, and the best way to make sure that number keeps growing is to start encouraging girls and teaching them about the amazing women that have come before them. Girls need to be taught about other women in STEM to show that their beautiful, creative, innovative minds have something to offer the world. Now we have a video, Fashion by Caitlin Tiffany and Evan McIntosh. What high schoolers are wearing with Caitlin Tiffany and Evan McIntosh. Shay. Um, okay, so I have my, what is this called? Cheetah, cheetah print scrunchie. And then I have my um, choker. And then my <laughs> blue shirt, little bralette, feels so stupid. sweater, belt, jeans, and bands. This, I think this is from Hollister. This is from American Eagle. 
The bralette is from Maurice's. I have no idea where the jeans are from. And the vans are probably from like Journeys. Summer. I hate winter. Lane. All right. I have fuzz all over. Can I go? Yeah. Uh, so I'm wearing my blue Nike shirt that my grandma got me. And then these are my black Nike pants. All right, baby stud. And then I got my black Nike socks and my black Nike slides. Because everything I wear is Nike. Uh, is your Nike like your favorite brand? Yes. Do you like dressing in the winter better than the summertime? Absolutely. Why? Because like in the summer, you gotta wear all that short stuff, and you, know, you can't do layers as much because you have to be like cold. <laughs> more layers, more things you can wear. Agnes. Okay, so I'm wearing this shirt that I got. Where did I get it from? I think I got it for Forever 21. This one, I well, my best friend thrifted this. These jeans are from Tilly's, and then I'm wearing Vans. So do you like dressing more in the wintertime or like in the summertime? Ooh, I feel like it would be like summer, but my favorite season is fall dresses. Oh yeah, why? I feel like it's just like the color scheme is a lot better. Oh, so like you like the colors? Yeah, okay. and the, like I like the cardigans. Ugh. Kylie. I didn't get that. <laughs> why? Okay, so I have this scarf headband thing, and that's from Target, I think. Um, these earrings, also from Target. Uh, very heavy and they hurt my ears. Um, this necklace, Evan gave it to me and I'm wearing it because it's her birthday. Um, this shirt is from Paxa. Thrifted this belt and these pants. And these shoes are from Journeys. Let's see if you like I like summer fashion better than winter fashion just because I like the warm weather. Now we have a video about clay by me, Devon. I'm Mrs. Brown. I teach the advanced wheel classes, advanced sculpture classes, and our appreciation. Our appreciation we have actually for concurrent credit. I like clay because I like working with my hands. I like the feel of the clay. Um, and one of the things I really like is that clay is very process oriented. So when you're working with the clay, there's kind of steps that you have to go through. And so it can become very kind of relaxing. So you're not thinking a lot about what you're doing. You're just creating. And one of the things that I think that's cool about teaching that is those steps are things that you can teach to students. And they can realize that if they kind of follow different processes and they practice, that they can create you know, beautiful objects too. This class is actually open to pretty much all grade levels. There's a prerequisite, which is fundamentals of clay. And in that class, they learn how to handle the clay without it moving. So they learn slabs and coils and pinch pots. And then after you've taken that, if you take in the fall of your freshman year, you can take it any time after that. So I have some students that will take this for repeat credit that have had this basically for over three years by the time they graduate. And so the work that they're making is beautiful. So, and at a college level. What inspired me to teach clay, I just, I liked working with my hands. Um, I don't know if I had a particular person, but a lot of people in my family were kind of, they like to do crafts. My dad does woodworking. My mom sews and weaves. My grandmother cooks and stuff. And so it was just kind of something that connected to me as far as like a craft or something that I could do with my hands. Um, I'm Stormy Gallagher. I'm a junior. I've been doing clay since eighth grade. Um, I like to sculpt with clay and metal because my teachers inspired me to use it and how to learn and grow with it. My teachers were all just great and like gave me tips. Now on sports. Welcome back everybody. It's sports time. Your Derby High School basketball teams had a busy week this week playing three games. First, at home, the boys beat Hutch 81-59 and the girls beat Hutch 57-31. Fast forward to Thursday, the girls beat Mays 53-22 and the boys lost a close one 55-52. Although there is still one more league game left tonight against Salina South, the girls basketball team has clinched their third straight league title, so congratulations to you guys. And also starting today, the Derby wrestling team sent 12 wrestlers to state wrestling this year. Good luck this weekend to Cody Woods, Nolan Egan, Tate and Trayton Rusher, Troy and Tyler Allen, Bryce Wells, Xavier Sisko, Case and Lindsay, Tayden Wills, Blaze Wood, and Alex Hurt. 
And to wrap up this episode, here's a highlight montage of the Panther Pals basketball game a couple weeks ago. That's all for this week. I'll see you next time on DTV.